I work at Walmart. What's the key to good customer service? Turn your brain off. How does that make you better? If you turn your brain off, you don't think about what they're asking. And you don't think about, you know, whether it's dumb or not. You just think about, oh, they need this. <laughs> That's a hilarious answer. Here. Call from Jerome. Hello? Hello? Jerome, Jerome, Jerome. What's going on with you, man? Not much. I'm just tripping out right now because I just got on the phone call with you. Uh, I'm. I'm. I feel like I'm tripping out too. Um, what are we, What are you doing? Right. What were you doing before you called? I was watching the screen. And I was laying down. So I got work in the morning. Oh yeah. What do you do? I work at Walmart in the uh, entertainment department. I like electronics and everything. Okay. What's the stupidest question somebody has asked you in the inter- the in the electronic section of the Walmart? It was it was like so we get a lot of older people and like no hate to older people, but they just ask the most obvious questions after they're answered. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was mainly just a question about um, how her phone worked, and it was it was just a struggle. But my customer service is amazing, not to brag. So. Well, you know, it's re- it's funny you say that because uh, on the surf, the the question of how a phone works, the answer to that is infinitely complicated. I have I would have no fucking idea how a phone works. That's true. That's it's re- it's it magical. Is, that that is true. That is true. So uh, that's you know that's why I kind of gave her the benefit. I give them all the benefit of, of the doubt. So you say you have great customer service skills. Yeah. It, um. So there's. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. So there's there's this lady that comes in because we got a photo lab and everything, and you know she comes in she orders posters for her church, and. Every time she comes in, she she's always looking for me. And mainly because I think it's because of my good service. I don't know. I feel like I'm bragging right now. Yeah, but bra- listen, brag away, man. You 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 what's the key to good customer service? Turn your brain off. Turning your brain off. How how does that make you better? Because if you turn your brain off, you don't think about what they're asking too hard. And you don't think about, you know, whether it's dumb or not. You just think about, oh, they need this. So <laughs> let me just help them out. That's a hilarious answer. That's a hilarious you know? answer. So, so basically, the way that you deal with with the stupid questions that people ask you while you're working at the Walmart is to just not think about how stupid is to basically numb your brain to the point where you're on the same level as them and their questions yeah. don't feel as stupid to you. Yeah. Like we get, it's Walmart, you know? So we get like, so, sometimes it's, you know, normal people. Sometimes it's like really crazy over the top people. Like, I've only been working there for a few months. Uh, I think my second month there, there was this lady comes in, right? And she doesn't get any electronics. She just comes in with a bunch of groceries. And she comes back to me and she's like, hey, can I get this stuff here? And I'm like, yeah, let me go help out this lady first. So I help out the lady, I come back. And then when it's her turn in line, she's just sitting there staring at me with a blank stare like, and I'm confused. So I'm like, why are you scared? And she says, so people don't want to, people want to stare, but don't want to keep staring when I look back at them or something. And I'm like, uh, okay. Do you think she like had a crush on you? Absolutely. <laughs> because, because, and she was an older lady too, and I'm in a relationship. So in my head, mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want nothing. Nothing. No, thank you, Matt. Here's the thing: is the one and you, you listen. You know as well as anyone that there's nothing yeah. more attractive to women than uh, amazing customer service skills. Yeah, 
And I actually think I learned that with this job. I'm gonna be honest. Mm. Mm. Okay, you're in a room. My... Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, one of my coworkers. He, <laughs> he's funny. His name's Will, and he's a fan of this. So I'm gonna show him this. Oh fuck yeah! If What's up, I Will? Post, I don't know the vibes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show him I'm gonna show him this uh, tomorrow if he's there at work. And uh, but he was like. And your customer service so good, they want to, they're like, they need to eat your ass. I'm like, bro. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great uh, uh, barometer to have. They should, when they're training you in Walmart, they should be like, your customer service needs to be good enough that <laughs> the customer wants to eat your ass afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's, a, you, you know, you said you were bragging, but it sounds like you were dangerously good at customer service. Have you ever had somebody ask you if they could eat your ass? I have not. Thank you. What would you do if they did? A customer? Yeah. Hold on, I'm about to burp. Excuse me. Excuse that was me. nice. Sorry. It's all right. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I think it would turn my brain back on. It would turn your brain back on. Yeah, I think if a customer was like, you know what, I really like how things are going here. I wanna, I wanna take about it, bite out of that juicy booty. I definitely be confused, but I might play along for a second. You might play along for a second. I, because you seem like you. Huh. Okay, let's say an old the, the the old lady who is staring at you looks at you and goes. Mm-hmm. She looks at your name tag and she goes, Jerome, um, thank you very much for helping me with my groceries today. Uh, I would love to lick your asshole. You would you would you would play along for a little bit. Yes, I I'd, I'd, I'd be like, you know what. I get off at five o'clock. Come back. And, but in reality, I get off at four o'clock. So I would not be. Oh, that's just cruel, man. (laughs) Yeah, it's just cruel. This, this poor old lady frothing at the mouth for your butthole and she shows up and no one's there. I know, but I just couldn't. Um,. Okay, you're in a relationship. How's that going? It's going pretty well. We've been together for a year now. Shout out Niaza. Shout out um, Niaza. Mm-hmm. Where'd Thank you guys you. meet? We met in school. Okay. What? Yeah, uh... so... Hey, I actually want to hear your question. No, no, go ahead. No. Okay. Um, so we met in freshman year. And we're graduated now. Well, yeah, we met in freshman year. We she didn't really like me because I was, I was one of those freshman kids who was like off the handle, type of stupid, not really like mature whatsoever. And I had a crush on her into sophomore year, and she joined the football team because I was I played football, and that was the most embarrassing time of my life because I would see her on the sideline talking to dudes, and I'd get so sad. Mm, mm. And when did you finally like ask her out? Um, so I did it that year, but she turned me down. And it was kind of like until the last last year, our last school year, um, where we became friends again. And then she developed a crush on me brought it to my attention and then I was like huh kind of like you too still so I'm so I'm just I think it would be a good idea to try it out so I tried it out and we've been together for a year now wait you've been together for a year you said yes okay okay um what does she do she works at an olive garden she works at an olive garden do you what do you have um so you're at Walmart right now. Do you are you 
uh, trying to go to school? Are you trying to do some other work thing? What's your What's your goal in in this universe? Yeah, um, I'm going to school this coming fall. Um, I'm really going. I'm really starting out to just build up my GPA because I wasn't really applying myself in high school. I kind of hated it, and but through that, I kind of figured out what my goal is in life, which is I got like multiple goals. So I really want to become a writer slash director. Um, and I also really want to become an owner of my own dispensary. Okay. Yeah. Um, what you want, what do you, what kind of things do you want to write and direct? Movies, movies, TV shows. Um, I also want to write music, see what I can do with that as well. Now, uh, you want to write and direct, uh, movies. What kind of movies are you, do you like comedy movies, uh, action movies? I'm kind of leaning more towards coming of age stories. You know what I mean? Coming of age stories. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any uh, uh, ideas or have you written any scripts already? I haven't written any scripts, but I have ideas. I have this idea of, um, it's called, I don't, it's, I think it's called um, Uncle Somebody's. Right. Uncle Somebody's it. Shop. Yeah, because I don't, I don't have a set name for him yet. Oh, okay, about... so like Uncle Joey's Shop. Yeah, yeah. It's about so let's say um, it's about you know Uncle Joey and his niece. Um, his niece recently lost his parent, lost her parents, and she comes to live with him. And he recently lost his fiance. Mm-hmm. And, so they're both grieving together. Yep. And him and his fiance, um, they built like a music. They built a band together. Like they built a life together, inspired and just focused through music. And he and they are both really good musicians. And when he lost her, he lost his dream. And so. You know, throughout the story, he's helping his niece deal with her grieving, and she's also helping him find that inspiration again, find that reason to explore music again or open up his heart. And Mm. there's this character that kind of plays, it's one of those characters you see in the movie where it's like the best friend. Yeah. And he's, he's, he comes and goes, but he's like he's t- he's showing the niece everything the uncle won't show her, and then in turn she shows the uncle once again, and he you know gets that spark back up. Mm, mm. I like this. What are are there um, directors or writers out there that in, that inspire you that uh, uh, maybe of the same genre or of a totally different genre? There are. Um, I'm blanking on their names right now, though. Or even just you, not, if you don't know their names, maybe just movies in general that you that you like that inspire your your uh, that inspire you. Yeah, there was this movie I just recently watched. There was um, <sighs> Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah, my fucking friend and I used to have a tradition. We would watch. Like every September back to school in high school, we would watch Little Miss Sunshine. For real? It was random. Yeah, I'm dead serious. It was very random. Wow. That sounds fun. That sounds we only did it uh, two years in a row. Actually, I, I don't even know if the. Wait, hold, I might be. We, we maybe said we were going to make it a tradition and we did it once. That's what <laughs> I actually meant when I said that we had a tradition. But, um. Yeah, I I I, I, li- I like Little Miss Sunshine a lot. Yeah, it it's really inspiring. And I think movies like that, where it's kind of like you see a character bring back hope to another character or other characters. Yeah, yeah. and you kind of bring them all together. I like movies like that. What what is it about that that is inspiring to you? Have you had have you like had um 
an experience like that where you didn't have a lot of hope and somebody brought it back to you? Yeah. All the time. Um, I've had friends, my girlfriend now, um, even content creators like you. And I watch a lot of Your Rage and Bruce Jacklemoff, Kai Sanat, and they're all really funny and they've kind of helped me in my time. You, everybody in my life and that was in my life has kind of helped me get back to finding a way to happiness, I think. Mm. Are and you feeling... a lot of... Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead. There's a lot of things I want to do and sometimes I'm like, dang, I might not be able to do this. But I think that's just me not trying and being scared to try in case I fail. Why do you think, think that you won't be able to do all of these things? Is it like a literally a matter of like, oh, I have so many desires that a lifetime can't even fill them? Is that, and I think, I think I'm genuinely scared that the opportunities just won't be there. Hmm. Give me, like, give me an example. So, let's say, well, I want, you know, like I said, I want to open up a, my own dispensary and everything. I kind of want it to be here in Ohio, but it's kind of looking dim that it won't be possible. And a lot of other places are overly saturated, so I don't want to go to another place and it just won't succeed. Um, why why is it looking like it won't be possible in Ohio? Is it like a, a, a law thing? Yeah. A lot of thing. Is is weed legal it, in Ohio? Uh, I think for medical use. Okay, but it's it's very suppressed. Okay, it's very hard. Well, this dispen well owning a dispensary like uh, is there a, is it a special kind of dispensary or something like that? Um, like I don't know, fucking, we're gonna do a a, a weed skateboard place or something or just kind of a run-of-the-mill dispensary yeah um kind of like um i want it to be like a weed slash movie theater slash hangout spot just a, a place where people can just come to you know smoke you know chill out watch movies hang out with their friends in just a safe area without having to worry about bothering other people if their families aren't comfortable with it or trying to struggle to find a spot to go to if they can't, you know, do it at their apartments or something like that. You know what's a bummer is I think, and some, please, if you are listening or, or whatever, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think everywhere in the U.S. at least where you can buy weed, you are not, there, there's no place where you can like actually buy the weed and sit and smoke it. Like in Amsterdam, they have these places where you can like go and buy pot and hang out and get drinks and like smoke it there. But US, I, I've never been to a place like that. They have like weed lounges. I've been to a lounge where you're allowed to bring weed that you bought somewhere else and smoke it there. I've been to a place like that. Um, but I don't think there are any places in the U.S. where you can both buy the weed and smoke it at the place. I might be 100% wrong, but... Um, I mean, it's kind of spot on with that. Um, but, you know, I feel, like you, I feel like in terms of the laws and the cost of operation, it might be easier to make the lounge than it is to make the dispensary just a place where it's like hey it's totally legal for people to come here and smoke pot and hang out and play video games and shit yeah that's yeah, something like... yeah thank you that's um i'm looking at the chat to see if uh uh that it, the chat doesn't know any more than uh, well, we have weed cafes in south africa yeah um Apparently, San Francisco has places like that. I have no idea. I have no idea. But i that's what I'm under the impression of. Um, but anyway, enough about shit that we can find on Google. What, um... Okay, back to you. You were saying a lot of interesting things. You were saying, uh... uh oh, yes. Are you feeling happy right now? You were kind of just talking about your, your path to happiness. Are you feeling happy where you are in your current life? Yes and no. 
yes and no. Uh, let's start with the no. Why no? I'm unhappy about... I'm still living with my parents. And... You know, my, my girlfriend is living with us too because of some fam familial issues. And I'm not unhappy about that. I'm just unhappy about... I don't know if I'm ready to not be living with my parents. Sure, yeah, dude. Or, you know what I mean? I kind of feel... I always feel pressured to be ready to, you know, move out and everything. And I, I want to be ready, but I don't know if I can just be like, yeah, I'm ready. And then just go out and convince myself that I'm ready. Can I ask um, you how old you are? I'm 19. You're 19? Dude, I didn't fucking... I, I don't know. I don't know how much you know about me, but I fucking... Um, started doing this show in my mom's basement and i was in my mom's basement from like 20 to, i don't think i moved out for, i was in my mom's basement from the ages of 22 to 24 um yeah. fucking just doing this you know and i i didn't I, I didn't rush it i was like this is a great opportunity to just like hang out and save money um and so I hope. Yeah, I mean, look, and you're fucking 19. You should, you know, stay there. Uh, it's a it's a blessing to have uh, parents that will let you stay at at, at your at their place, you know. Um, and uh, uh, at 19, I feel like there's no fucking way that you're gonna um, have enough. Uh, I don't know, there's no way that you could be reasonably expected to have your financial situation so beautifully. Uh, uh, shaped up that you should, uh, you know, be be in a fucking penthouse downtown or anything like that. I mean, it's a great opportunity to hang out and save money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I that's what I did uh, for those two years. I was just like, I'm just gonna work as much as I can and save before moving out. Yeah. And I want to do that, but I I. You know, like I said, I feel pressured by a lot of people to just be ready, you know what I mean? By who? Who's a lot of people? Well, I feel like my dad, kind of. Uh, does he want you out of the house? I think so. Like, he's not... I kind of got a history with him. But he's okay. not the most... It's hard... For me, it's hard to be you know what I mean? Like, well, I've talked about, you know, moving out or staying or whatever. And it's like, he doesn't want me to move in with my girlfriend, but he doesn't, I don't think he wants me to stay here. You know what I mean? I thought your girlfriend lives, oh, he doesn't want you and your girlfriend to move out and get a place? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Oh, uh, well, I do know. You know, babies. That's what he uh, really oh, he's afraid that you're going to have a kid. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. First, first, first of all, um, I mean, I was going to say your dad has no, like, your dad can't really tell you what to do with your life, but I mean, he can, he can tell you to get the fuck out of his house. Um, <laughs> he can do that. He can yeah. absolutely, totally, justifiably do that. Um, 100%. well, the cool, I think, I feel like the cool thing about, you know, uh, if you wanted to move in with your girlfriend, I mean, there's, look, you know, you, you guys have been together for a year or whatever, there's, there's significant challenges in that. Um, yeah. But you save a lot of fucking money with just one room if you guys are doing that. Yeah. I I would agree with... I, again, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life, but uh, having a kid right now might be a little fucking rough. I don't know if that's in your mind. Not at all. I don't want to Okay, it. good. Yeah. Um... All right. What I mean. All right. So you said your your your. Are there any other no's when you were like, "I'm happy"? Uh, when when I asked you the question, you said yes or no. And so one of the no's is you're feeling weird about being in your parents' house, which I re I really think you shouldn't. Um, again, coming from a guy who lived in his his mom's basement for a pretty long time. Um, what? Are there any other no's? Yeah. What are they? Um. This one's kind of the reason I called. I wanted some advice on this. Okay, sure. I've been wanting to catch the stream and call about this for a while. 
because it's an ongoing issue. So, my girlfriend has an issue with, you know, weed. She doesn't like it. <laughs> when somebody says that someone has an issue with weed, either they, they like it too much or they hate it. Yeah, they, she hates it. All right. Tell me more. My thing is, when I found weed, it kind of like brightened up my life. It, I found it at like a really bad time. And it kind of, I don't know, after I took, because I started with edibles, but after I ate that first one, I was like, wow. It wasn't just the feeling for me. It was the thoughts I was having. It kind of like brightened up my experience for life. And even without it now, it's kind of like it enhanced it. Huh. And I've, every moment I've kind of dreamed about it being a part of my life. And... I'm I'm torn between the fact that I possibly might have to choose that over her in the future. You know what I mean? And okay, we've well, talked. Right. No, go, I'll yeah. let you finish. We've we've talked about it, and I I've told her this concern, and she was like, "You don't have to worry about it." Well, she didn't say that, but. I mean, every time we've talked about it, it's kind of like her trauma. Because she, her friend had uh, undiagnosed epilepsy or stress. Somehow she got stress and due epilepsy and she, you know, she was smoking and you know, it triggered it. And her friend mm. almost died. Mm. So that's why she's, that's why she hates it. And okay. I'm like... I, I completely understand that. But I also okay. don't want it completely throw it away. Because it's, it's part of my dream for life. And I kind of feel like that's stupid. But I kind of don't. And I also think that... You know, like I said, every time we talk about it, she's just really heartbroken and torn up about it. She doesn't want... She's worried something will happen to me. Or I'll get uh, by by smoking too much. Let me ask, do you smoke weed every yeah. day? No, no, I haven't smoked since we started dating. You haven't smoked oh, really? So you haven't smoked for a year? Yeah. Huh. So you haven't smoked since you guys have started dating, but but you have this like passion for weed that is is more so. T- I, I, tell me more about this. This is fascinating. What's so? So you did you stop smoking because of her? Yes. Yeah. I think and, so, yeah. Okay. And when you said you found weed and it really helped you, tell how did it help you? Um. It's it. I was having issues with my emotions. Or I was suppressing them a lot and I wasn't able to express them. And I was just feeling really, really down. Okay. Every time I smoked, assumed it, it just, you know, brought me back up, made me feel really good. And a lot of the times I found myself being able to express my emotions more rather than being able to suppress them. And. Brother- Brother, let me ask you a question. Have you been to a uh, real therapist and or, 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 or even a doctor and gotten like – because – cause, I mean look. Um, I mean what you're doing, you're self-medicating. Uh, yeah. I think you know that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you whether I've, I think this is right or wrong because I have no idea I'm not a doctor or a psychotherapist person, whatever. But have you ever been to a therapist or a doctor and, like, talked about all this stuff and um, gotten their opinions and thoughts? I have not. Okay. I think you should because um, – uh, look, you know yourself, and and my, I can I can only speak anecdotally about weed and how it it uh, affects everybody differently. 
Um, and some yep. people it, it helps them and some people it doesn't. And, 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 and in my opinion, uh, a drug's hindrance or um, a drug's hindrance or what's the, what's the opposite of a hindrance? A help, help, helpfulness to yeah. your life um, can be based on a, a variety of things. But um, if you can, you should try and talk to a real doctor or therapist about this kind of thing. Because, I mean, look, dude, you, there are, of course, there's like medical marijuana that like lots yeah. of people with depression or anxiety have, have used. And it has helped their lives in the same way that like, you know, somebody taking fucking... SSRIs or depression medicine medicine have have been helped. Um, so that might be what's going on with you. But if you should talk to an actual fucking doctor about this stuff, have you okay. have you is that something you even considered? Yes. Okay. And yeah. how, how come you haven't done it yet? I don't. I don't have the money. Yeah. I've kind of been, yeah. I've, yeah. I've been talking to my parents about. It. I was like, hey, mom. I heard wanted to talk to a therapist and we, she just we we haven't really hooked up with one yet i kind of don't want because you know my little sister goes to a therapist but that's like she's like a, Jerome? Sorry, was just, yeah sorry there was this thumping in my house all night but are you high right um, now no no are you seeing a weed goblin I am not. Okay. All right. Continue. Sorry. I'm not. Um, where was I? Talking about your little oh, sister. So she, yeah. So she sees like a Christian therapist, and I don't really. I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I want to see a therapist that's not based in any type of religion or anything like that. Because I feel like that kind of ruins it. I think out. you want to see a Judaist priest. A Judaist priest. A Dudist priest. It's it's. I think it's from the Big Lebowski. I was trying to make some joke about weed, but anyway, um, are your is your family really religious? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. Look, I I, I know I know I, that's a fucking bummer. I know that. I, well, does Walmart? What about fucking Walmart? Do they not give you stuff? Do they give you health insurance or any of that shit? Um. I actually just got a. a sent a letter about that because I've only been there for like three months and I'm part time so I don't really know what all I'll get but I'll have to check it out okay yeah. alright so you know I mean look you asked you wanted my advice that's my advice I know it's I know it's a bummer I know it fucking sucks and it's hard and expensive no. to, to like get that kind of thing but um yeah. Uh, okay, so back to the thing. I'm okay, but this is fascinating. So you, so you have this. You want weed to be a part of your life in uh, th- yeah. this this way that um that it sounds like you haven't even f- had the opportunity to fully healthily explore. Um, and you haven't smoked it in a in a year. But your girlfriend's very anti anti weed. Um, but here's my thing, right? Okay. You want to ma- you want to make this. Can I, I want to float something too. You want to make this this lounge or dispensary that like people can hang out in, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're you're not. From my perspective, your passion is not is not about weed, but it's about fostering um, a positive environment for other people and bringing them together. That sounds more accurate than you would just have a passion for weed, unless if I'm mistaken. You're you're right, but it's also I do I do have a passion for it because I, okay. I really like like it's more than because it's more than just like self medicating for you know my issues and everything because in this past year you know I've been able to separate it from that I think. Because hmm. now I'm not wanting to use it because I'm feeling down and everything, but it's more like I want to use it as I don't know, like 
opening the door to what I want to do. You know what I mean? Opening the door to what you want to do. Yeah. So how 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 so? I don't know. Okay. Well, it sounds like you have. Well, okay. Well, it sounds like you have. I know that you brought up the dispensary, but you have you have desires outside of the dispensary. I mean, you just you told me about that whole yeah. movie that you want to make that has nothing to do with weed. This lounge, uh, even though it is, uh, you know, you want to do a weed lounge or a weed dispensary or something like, you know, again, like uh, has more to, in my opinion, to do with with community building than it does with just pot. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is a tough one. I think you need to talk to a doctor or therapist about about it. I don't think you're wrong because, again, lots of people, uh, you know, there is medical marijuana and, and weed is, has been a really a positive force in a lot of people's lives. But um, I think, you know, especially because you're so fucking young, um, you should get with a uh, – a real um, doctor. Uh, you know how I'm always messing up people's names and shit? A, l- a little part of... I wondered this the other day. A, a little part of me wonders if I just smoked too much goddamn weed from, <laughs> you know, the ages of 16 to now that that's what that is. I don't... I, part of me fucking fucking wonders that if I just smoked so much fucking weed that it must have, little parts of my brain don't work. Um... <laughs> So go talk to a person who knows what the fuck. Because neither of us know the science of any of this shit. Unless if you do. Unless if I don't know if you've been reading history textbooks or anything. But um, okay. But listen, before we go, okay, we we covered the nose. Okay, mm-hmm. which which by the way, I don't think either of those nose, from my perspective, are 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 um, debilitating. Ones, I think they're ones that you can overcome. Uh, what are the yeses? Why? What? What are the things that are reasons why you're happy? I'm happy that I'm just breathing. That's a that's a that's the most thing you can ever be fucking sure of to be happy about. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Tell me more. I'm happy that you know my family's healthy. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that you know I got a job up I've been at for a while rather than just hopping from job to job. Um, I'm happy about my girlfriend. Um, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that she's here. Um, yeah. Well, that's great, man. It sounds like um I mean look every here's the thing everything that you just said um I I think is uh, uh, uh way more powerful than the things that you told me that you were uh, uh, unhappy about um yeah. so you're in a good spot my friends hey. hmm hmm are you gonna you know man I want to just say I, so you want to make movies and shit. Yeah. You ever just, you ever thought about just making it? Just doing it? Doing it on the fucking iPhone? Yes. But I think I have an issue with laziness. <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so I'll be thinking of like, maybe I should figure out how to make a little mini movie on my phone. And then I'll get distracted. I'm like, nah. All right. I did, all right. Be, on, be honest with me. Okay. Are you, are you, do you, uh, oh, wait a minute, you told me, I was gonna, okay, I was gonna ask you if you think the weed, um, makes you lazy, but you, you you don't even, you don't even fucking smoke weed, (laughs) you're talking, you're like in love with weed and you don't even smoke it. Yeah, yeah, which is a weird predicament, I will say. Um. That's a very weird thing. Okay, so you're, you're lazy, what, okay, when you get distracted, what's distracting you? Just everything. Uh-huh. Like, I'll, I'll be sitting down. I'm like, hmm, right now is a really good moment to just do this thing. And then I'll open up TikTok and listen to a song. And then I'm like, I'm going to do this thing instead. 
Delete fucking t- delete TikTok off your phone. Delete it off your phone. I I I just I took a long time away from posting on social media and shit, and uh, I started back up today, and I put TikTok back on my phone, and then I fucking found myself scrolling through it. And the only reason I have it downloaded is because I upload things on there. But when it wasn't right. on my phone, I never fucking delete it off your phone, dude. Uh, I swear to God. You think that'll help? Yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure it'll help. I don't do it right now. Okay, do it right now. Delete TikTok off your phone. What else distracts you? Um, games. Yeah, what are you playing? Uh, it just depends. I can't focus on one game at a time. I kind of get caught in the loop of playing a game, getting bored of it, playing another game, getting bored of that, and then getting caught in like a super deep rabbit hole of like one, um, like anime or movie or so like right now i got caught into one piece naruto star wars and yeah that's pretty much it hmm you know you know it's it's funny man i'm th- i'm thinking about this is something i've always th- in my own life thought about um and this is one of my big I don't I don't know if I'd call it a struggle but a thing I grapple with is like you just when I asked you think uh why you were ha- when I asked you the things to, that you were happy about um they were all really like things that you could know for sure right like you you were happy about your family you were happy about your girlfriend you were happy about just the fact that you could breathe and that gave you a lot of happiness um but you're also struggling with, like, you're an ambitious dude, and you have things you want to get done. And there's a struggle there of uh, your ambition versus your laziness. Um, and that struggle, can, I'm sure, uh, can cause you to be hard on yourself or beat yourself up um, yeah. and have that kind of pervade over you. And that's been my life is, uh, for a lot of times is, like, uh, I'm I'm an ambitious dude, but I also get lazy and fuck up uh, a lot and that causes me to beat myself up and um um you know have this like kind of uh, uh default overlay of my life being that beating myself up when really the default overlay of my life should be thank fuck it like the every like the 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 crux the thesis the overlay of of life all, at all times should be mm-hmm. um i'm just stoked i can breathe i'm stoked my family's alive just just gratefulness you know um yeah but then but then to that point if you're always thinking about that then how the fuck are you ever gonna get anything done um that's been a thing that i'm tr- i have i wish i could figure that out uh i'm still i'm still figuring that out um, and I made a decision with myself to not have like, you know, guilt and shame and shit be, um, the forefront of my brain and to have more, uh, gratefulness and more of the shit that you're talking about be at the forefront of my brain. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if anything I just said made sense, but you are not alone in, in these thoughts. It made sense. And thank you. Thank you. Well, goddamn Jerome. I th- I'm I think you're gonna be good, man. I, I I'm I think you got a good thing going. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Hmm. It feels really good to hear that. Uh, dude, is there anything else that you wanted to say uh, to me or the people of the computer or um, or or uh, a dog in a trench coat before we go? Everybody, walk outside, take a huge deep breath of the fresh air, breathe it out, and then just smile. That's nice. And then if you're lucky, an old woman at Target will come up to you and ask you to lick your butthole. Uh, Not Target, Walmart. (laughs) All right. Yeah. All right. All right, you have a good one, Jerome. Thank you, man. It's good talking to you. Thank you. It was amazing. Good night, man. Good night.
That was a great call with Jerome. Shout out to him. Um, I, it definitely go try to see if you can actually get uh, medical marijuana instead of self medicating. I'm not. I'm. I, I say that as somebody who has self medicated uh, with marijuana uh, for a long time, and uh, now as a result can't remember a single person's goddamn name on my podcast. But. Uh, Shout out to Jerome. I hope I, I I hope you do make that lounge. There's not enough places like that. I'm surprised when I like I said when I was in Denver for the very first time like five fucking years ago. I went to a place like that and it was awesome. They had like you know uh, uh, dab rigs. You could bring your own oil and play video games and shit. It was great. I'm surprised that a business doesn't exist like that. Um, or more places don't exist like that. You know I'm in Los Angeles right now and there's I don't I don't know if there are any weed lounges i mean the whole fucking city is pretty much a weed lounge um so yeah give me a reason to fucking go to ohio again man all right thanks jerome call from sage hello lyle hi is this really lyle yeah who is this dude no way i was like i just Saw so you hit the vape pen, and then I was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna hit my vape pen." Well, that's awesome. Well, oh okay. fuck you. Uh, okay, you. All right. So I'm gonna just give some context here. Right before I picked up this call, um, I told the stream I was like, "I'm. Ne- I people think I'm stoned when I'm doing this, and I never am. I never yeah, am. Yeah, no, no, no. I've been but watching. I, I've been watching the stream." But I, 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 every once in a while, uh, but I, but I just, I don't know why this is the last call I'm going to take of this. I don't know where, where this call will be in the podcast, but of this stream, this is the last call I'm going to take. So I was like, you know what? Let's experiment. I will take one hit of a vape pen. So, you, so just to give some context and clarity to those listening, this is one hit of a vape pen, Lyle speaking to one hit of a vape pen sage i think incredible. we're set up for success incredible wow 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 okay awesome okay well basically i don't know i uh the the main thing i wanted to talk to you about tonight uh was like i okay so i have been like doing this thing lately where i take like some tobacco right and i take some weed right and i put them both in my bong and You're I crazy. smoke, uh, I smoke them both out of my bong, right? You're and I call mind. it, I call it a blam, right? And I, and it just like, it's like you know, it just absolutely like, you know, just like zoots you, right? It makes you just like, it just totally like, just gets you so like stoned and like tobacco high and all that, right? Uh, and I, it's like the thing is, man, is that it's, it's like. It makes it makes your breath smell bad, you know. It just oh, makes sure. it makes everything gross, right? And oh, like, I'm sure. I don't I don't like having the tobacco, you know, in my life and shit like that. And like, uh, and it's like, uh, you know, it's like I, I want to like you know quit doing that, right? And uh, I don't know. I was listening to the stream, like I said, and it's like earlier you were talking about how you're like, oh, I don't really want to like give advice, but you're also like, well, 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 well about, hold like, on, hold on. Stuff. Let me let me let me. I have I have several questions first. So, um. You you basically are making these like spliff bowls. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been doing this for? Uh oh, it's been like on and off for a couple of years, but I've been I've been like amping it up uh, in the last like does, few weeks or so. Does tobacco? Does tobacco? I'm not a big cigarette guy. Does tobacco give you like a high? Well. Like, I don't think tobacco really, like, gets you, it doesn't really get you, like, high, right? But it's, like, it's, like, it it, it gets you a little bit, like, uh, like, a little bit, like, maybe lightheaded, I guess, right? Like, there's a little okay. bit of, like, a nicotine high, but it's, like, it's you get, you get like, like, a head rush like, of some kind, right? Yeah, yeah. It's It doesn't last like, like, weed does, right? So but the like, nicotine... And the weed combined together to form a a blammo. A fa- is that what you call, said, blammo? Yeah, a blam. A blam. A blam effect to the brain, thus yeah. spawning the name blam. Blammo is like a company that makes fucking frisbees, I think. Anyway, hold on. I have to Google that right now to make sure that that's true. I'm just I'm ruining the entire frisbee. flow of this conversation to see if 
No, no, um, legendary. I'm gonna buy a frisbee that, so I can put my like tobacco wait. and weed on it. Blamo, no, Blamo makes fucking Blamo toys, right? Blamo. What do they do? What do they do? <laughs> Dude, whatever. Anyway, I, I'm just. It's just a bunch of art stuff. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, what is your name? Oh, it's Paige. Paige. Sage. Um, so you. Oh, Sage. 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 Sorry, I suck at names. Yeah. Anyway, Sage. Okay, so you're asking a bit. So. I'm sorry, I cut you off about 500 times during this conversation, but I think you were asking me for advice on how to stop um, doing um, half tobacco, half weed bong well, rips. I mean, like, kind of, but I also just wanted to, like, talk to you about, like, blams and the concept of it. I'm like, it's gross, you know? I'm like, yeah, if you got any advice on how to on how to quit or if you can you know if you can be my my guidance you know and tell me as as my gecko therapist uh that that'd be a good idea i guess that that'd be inspiring look i here's the thing i've said multiple times i am not licensed to do anything um i am dumb but i will say here's i will say this with confidence and i'm not saying and uh, Taking a bong rip of tobacco is probably not great for your health. I am no expert on the things that are great for your health. I also smoke weed uh, uh, almost every day, so I'm not a big, um, you know, I'm not the guy to 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 to, to tell you how to quit. Well, okay, tell me this: what effect yeah. are these blams having on the rest of your life? Uh, I don't think it's like that much of an effect. It, it makes it makes it so that like I need like it's like it's like sometimes I I like want to like go. It's like it's like when I'm like out, I'm like looking forward to like getting to go home, and, like taking a blam, right? But it's like <laughs> or but it's like that's not like okay. It's not like a it's not like a uh, die hard like desire, you know. Uh, so like, it's like so you know that meme you know that meme like let's say you're 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 like you know do you have a do you have a partner of of some kind? Yeah, no, no, that's another thing about it, right? Is that it's like it's like makes my mouth all gross, right? So I don't want to like I don't want to be like anywhere near like my partner if I like if I take a play, right. I'm gonna like. So if, I'm, I'm imagining so, this meme, right? I'm imagining this. You know that meme of like you're like you're in bed with your partner. And it, like, there's a there's a there's a thought bubble, and it's like they're probably they're pro they're probably they're probably thinking about other people, and then your thought bubble is just a fucking uh, a half tobacco, half weed. <laughs> That's your life right now. That's fucking legendary, Lyle. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> fucking legendary. That's your oh life right god. now. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Um, and you know. I mean, look here. I don't, I don't know. There's other. You could be addicted to crack. That's and you're not. That's good. You could have. Um, Amen. You could be addicted to um, it's cocaine. That's probably worse than the tobacco mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. bong rips. What other? Okay, so it's it's the it's you're out with your friends. You're in school. You're at, well, all you can think about all day is taking <laughs> a blam. Well, no, no. I definitely got like other things going on in life. I'm like. I'm like a student at university. I got a lot of like homework that I like worry about all the time. And I'm uh, almost a hundred percent sure that while you're doing your homework, you can't focus on what do you, what do you study at school? Math. Okay, so the it, fucking you're looking at equations, and you're like, I would so much rather be looking down the barrel of a bong about <laughs> to take a blam right now. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's definitely like that. I mean that's understandable. Obviously, um, you know, bong rips of tobacco are going to be more uh, uh, appealing to you than calculus. I have no yeah. fix for that issue. Um, totally, I don't have to like. Yeah, there's no. Yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to solve any anything. You just got to put the weed and the tobacco in the bong. And light it here's up. the thing. Here's what we. Here's and again. I'm no. I'm no anything. But uh, I think the solution is you need to find something. That's more compelling to you in the universe than half weed, half tobacco bong rips that you can replace it with, mm. like mm. cocaine. Now, like cocaine. What the about the problem? <laughs> is cocaine Incredible. is very okay. expensive. It is really expensive and difficult to find. 
Unless you yeah, know where I, to look. Yeah, I don't look. know. I feel like I could get my hands on it, but it's like, it, but it's a price thing. It doesn't feel worth it, you know. I'd rather, it's like, it's like I'd rather smoke way more blams than you know, like, do a bunch of cocaine. Because it's like the thing about that is like, it's like I've heard things about how you run up the, you mess up the lining of your of your nostrils or whatever, and then yeah. when you get a cold, your snot just like runs out of your nose, and like. I, when I was um, I when I was in high school, when I was in high school, the, uh, there was like a guy who like came to our class who was like a coke, like a former coke addict, and he put his finger in one nostril and it came out the other. He probably just had a big gauge and was paid by the cops to come do that for you. That's cool as fuck. It's fucking <laughs> awesome, honestly. That's what I. That's what, dude, That's what I said. I, I was sitting there like, dude, cocaine's kind of sick. That guy was cool. <laughs> like that's fucking cool as fuck. Um, you you know what you could that I feel like that could be your tra- your career trajectory, right? Like you you um uh you get off of the blams, and then you uh-huh. become uh-huh. you becomes you you go to 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 schools across the nation, educating children about the dangers of them. Yes. No. Yeah. I'm I'm into that. I'm into that. Have you ever seen the movie? Uh, I I'm a big I'm into this movie. I have you ever seen Grizzly Man? What is, is that about a guy addicted to weed tobacco rips? Well, it's about a guy who he, he, he goes across the country going to schools, right? That's where I was doing the tie in for. He, he, at the end of the movie, he like talks to, he talks to schools about bears and shit, right? And it's like at the end of the movie, it's like, oh, he gets eaten by bears, right? Uh, and so I was thinking I could get like eaten by blams at the end of the movie. Man, I got to tell you, that's the kind of thought that a guy who was addicted to blams would have. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you. What is your name? Uh, Sage. Sage. I'm sorry. I keep. I've said this. I've asked no, you your name good. three times. You know, it's funny. I. I. Um. With the name thing, uh, people get a uh, like. Pe- people think I'm like doing a bit when I do that. Um. I don't. I don't remember. Pe- I remember. Here's the thing: is I have been paying. I have been. I want you to know something, Sage. I have been thinking oh, yeah. genuinely about you and this issue, okay? Because you okay. came to me sincerely asking me about um, your addiction to weed, tobacco rips. And in my thinking about that, I just forget your name because I'm thinking Sage. about what you're actually talking to me about. It's Sage. Thank you for, oh, thank no. you for reminding yeah, me. Yeah. Thank you for understanding. Yeah. Sage, is there anything else that you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, well, I, uh, I want to, I wanted to, if I'm the last call of the night and you're getting off and all that, I just wanted to wish you good luck doing your laundry. I think you were talking about that earlier and cleaning your room and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that done, uh, while I was listening to your stream. So maybe now you can use that energy to clean your own space. I love the idea that I procrastinate doing my laundry to uh, do this show, and then people do their laundry while it, while they listen to it. There's, I'm like, it's, it's like, like I'm, like. it's like I'm taking whatever like uh, 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 energy I had to do laundry, and I'm transmuting it and giving it to others instead of Damn, using it myself. Beautiful, Lyle. Isn't beautiful, it? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful wearing the same underwear? Um, you know, m- months in a row. Well, it's a sacrifice. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go. I mean, it's, I guess the, there's beauty in the sacrifice, you know, but the actual sacrifice itself, is, uh, kind of, uh, 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 like obscene. I'm looking for another word, but I can't find it. You know what? I like the way you think, Sage, and I think you should keep doing these weed tobacco rips because they're obviously doing something beautiful and great to your brain. Legend, I fucking love you, Lyle. Thank you so much. Hey, you have a good night, Sage. Hey, yeah, you have a great night, Lyle. Bye. I'm going to go do one right now.